Hey everyone, welcome back to the Gunner's Guild. I'm going to cover the set changes for most Gunner setups since the introduction of Kul Taroth, Dante, and Azure Star Knight kind of changed a lot of things. I'm going to make this very brief and quickly go through the semi-optimal sets for each weapon. I say semi-optimal because it's going to be for time attack rules, which affinity booster is not allowed, so we're going to swap the attack decorations for affinity ones most of the time. This should be a bit easier on everyone, but just keep in mind that if you're running Affinity Booster, you can sacrifice much more crit than I can. Now before I get into it, some things you're going to need are A. Kulf Taroth weapons, as a lot of them are straight up upgrades for gunners. B. Dante legs, for it has weakness exploit 2 and 2 level 1 slots. And C. Star Knight legs. This only applies if you're going to use bows, but they're pretty solid since it has crit boost and works with the Wrath of Lose gear for crit element. Here's a list of Kulf Taroth weapons that were good to look for. Apologies if you needed this list sooner, I did have it up on my Twitter and Twitch channels though. For bows, Taroth Arrow, Water, Thunder, Queen, and Horn were all very good bows to look for. For Light Bowgun, Taroth Blitz, Spread, Shot, Pierce, King, and Mire were all very good. And Heavy Bowgun, it's basically just Glutton. And then support for Pierce if Pierce ever becomes good, and Horn is the poor man's glutton. Now with that out of the way, I'm going to quickly glance over the sets. Starting with bows. Now I have three Dragon Bow sets currently. Joe Bows, Val Hazak, and Taroth Arrow Queen, or just Queen Bow. Surprisingly, Queen is a very solid Dragon Bow. It has higher Dragon than Val and Joe at the cost of some raw, but also has a natural 10% affinity. The set sits at 234 raw, 430 dragon, and 70% affinity against weak zones. Comparing it to Val at 252 raw, 350 dragon, and 75% affinity, and Joe at 294 raw, 270 dragon, and 60% affinity. Now the trading pull highly favors raw damage, but even so, Queen's bow out damages both Val and Joe. It's just by one point. But that's going to be slightly higher against monsters that are weak to dragon since the raw hit zones aren't going to be as high as the pull. Now they're very clearly close to each other, but each of them trade off some raw and some affinity for some dragon element, one way or the other. But keep an eye out for Queen, I think this is probably the go to dragon bow now. Taroth Arrow Thunder is a straight up upgrade to Toby Kodachi's bow. It has much higher raw and only sacrifices a little bit of affinity. Sitting at 246 raw, 460 thunder and 73% affinity against weak zones and still having power coats is nuts. This bow just shreds anything weak to thunder. Taroth Arrow of Water is in the same bow, it's just a better proud bow. Not too much better, only about 8-10% to but it's still better. Unfortunately it's still stuck with only close range coatings but then again so did proud bow. This pretty much uses an identical set to thunder aside from the elemental decorations. Legiana's bow got a slight upgrade with the Star Knight leggings, and I also tried to compare it to the Taroth Arrow Horn bow, which had potential to be decent due to its obscene raw along with the hidden 300 ice, but unfortunately while it hits as hard as Legiana, that's against a training pole which again favors raw, and that on top of it being 20 crit under Legiana and only having access to close range coats doesn't quite cut it. I don't think it'll compete with Legiana outside multi-monster hunts where one or two may be weak to ice and the others are not, but I included it specifically for that situation. Anjanath's bow got a little bit better as well thanks to the Dante boots. Since we can use the Wrath Waste for the two pieces of Wrath gear, we can forego Star Knight and get slightly more out of the Dante boots. This bow really didn't need to be stronger, but it is. <laughs> Nothing else is special here. For light bow guns, basically everything got better. Taroth Blitz Mire is the upgraded Jiria light bow gun, which still fires everything Jiria did, but has more raw and affinity. No downsides here. At 95% affinity, this thing hits the pole for 25 damage per spread 2, or 125 damage per shot. With the magazine size of 5 and normal reload, it's pretty solid. Joe's light bow gun basically got 5% more affinity thanks to Cole's chest, but nothing else really changed here. It's still stuck using the Xeno set bonus. And while it still hits pretty hard, I've been eyeing that new spread 2 light bow gun. Taroth Blitz Shot is the new rapid fire normal 2 light bow gun, easily surpassing Karma. 
Thankfully it can run non-elemental boosts on top of its great raw. You can throw on 3 close range mods, or 1 and 2 reload mods for fast reload normal too. It probably won't make much of a difference either way, but it's still an option. While normal 2 is still lacking in good power, this gun definitely puts it pretty close to spread 2 light bow guns, but still not quite as good as spread 3. Taroth Blitz, Pierce, Spread, and King are the new elemental light bow guns, and they're straight up upgrades to previous elemental light bow guns as well, except for King, which is the same as the Rathlos, except it's gold, so it's better. And they all have pretty much the exact same sets, except swapping out the elemental decorations. I opted to include Ammo Up and the Xeno set bonus just for the lack of extra ammunition for elemental shots, but it may not be necessary if you can kill the monster within your ammo limits already. Unfortunately, Elemental still doesn't have very many uses outside of Kulf Taroth, since the tick rate of Elemental makes it rarely pierce normal monsters. It works decently on Val, Nerg, Uragon, and Diablos though. For heavy bowguns, there were two really good options. The first being Taroth Assault Support, which is the Pierce Heavy Bowgun. It's a direct upgrade to Shattercrist and a very solid gun. Unfortunately, Pierce itself is still pretty awful, but hold on to this in the event that Pierce gets a rework and becomes great, because this bowgun could become a monster. Speaking of monsters, the second heavy bowgun, Glutton, is a monster. This is by far the most overpowered and ridiculous weapon in the game. This thing is probably stronger than clusters, it's just gross. 8 spread 3 with recoil 1 is absolute madness. Those fortunate enough to get one should be ripping through anything and everything right now. I don't have one unfortunately, and the backup for that is the Horn, which is just an upgraded Destruction Fusillade. It has to run Xeno Armor due to the magazine size of 4, which makes it nowhere near as reliable as Glutton, but it's still an upgrade to the previous Spread 3 Heavy Bow Guns. Alright, well that's all my updated sets. I'll post a link to the album in the comments and on my Twitter if anyone needs to look at them. I'm sure there's some other minor tweaks here and there for optimizations, but I'll get around to testing those when I get back into World. Anyways, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.